You can upgrade your mouse a million times, but you still gotta practice to be good. Uh, uh. Good audio, however, comes in the box. You can trust your ears out of game. Now it's time to trust them in game. Don't be like Daniel. Bye, Aso. Let's give it a shot. We give it a shot. I made a weird drink. You know, I was thinking I want to make this video. Let's go top three in each role, and I'll say who I think is the best player in every role in CSGO, but this one's a little bit emotional for me, man. I, I don't really want to do this to be combative about who's the best, and I think a part of me likes getting into the debates a bit. I think I have fun with it. I like the storylines. I like people saying, this is my goat, this is my goat, you know? Glaze my goat, Kerrigan's your goat. I like that. But at the same time, the more I think about these things, and I think back on 10 years of CSGO, I can't help but get nostalgic and a little bit sad every time I have to say glaive is my goat because kerrigan lives in his shadow and then i have to take kerrigan down a peg and it's like man i love kerrigan i don't want to do that this is more so who my favorites are plus who i think is the best of it a little bit of stats maybe if we have to go there but let's talk about the best players in their roles over the years and this is mostly for the people who were there the whole time and forgot or weren't there earlier on and want to know who some of the best players of all time were because if anything i have a pretty good scope on that as someone who's been watching since the beginning okay let's start with most controversial all right why don't we go in for best entry here this one i did have to actually incite statistics a bit because i had to go look at on hltv you'll see opening kills and opening kill attempt rates okay these are really important and then you can sort by ctt side different years and different rankings so just for reference i'm using a top 20 filter i'm looking at different peak years and all time in csgo since it's an all-time list in history if we think about our favorite entry fraggers of all time who do we think of look at the top you see device saibu simple doesn't make sense. They're not the favorite entry fraggers we think of. They're oppers, elite oppers, and I'll get to that in a second. But we think about players like Apex, Rain, Dupree, Freiburg, Fur, Elige. These are the entry fraggers by brand that we think about who are the best in the world. And so it feels like we've got to pick from them. But you know, my favorite entry and, and who I think is the best entry and who has a pretty incredible stats argument as well. It's somebody who in the modern CS era has definitely gotten a lot of credit for this. It's Nico. You know, if CT side means anything, and if you look at his CT side rating on opening duels and not screw the stats, okay, think about CT side Nico on Banana on Inferno, trying to take down the opera who jumps up on logs, swinging half wall and pushing down with a flash, with a car flash behind him. The rifler who is very comfortable taking up to 30% of opening duels on CT sides in some of his peak months, okay? And in the last year, he's been doing great. Nico, who controls Yard on Nuke on both halves, his top competition is another entry fragger in rain, and I'd like to give him a special shout out. But Nico playing outside as a rifler, always casting his games throughout history. I'd always say it's like you have six players on your team when Nico's in yard because normally you need a lot of support. You need a opper behind your rifler, a queen behind your rook. And with Nico, you didn't need that. Nico, you could leave him alone. He'd be comfortable standing on top boxes, on top big garage, lurking around a smoke, readying a push without any assistance. And he was so reliable. It's incredible. And he goes in this outlier of guy who has some of the highest opening attempts on both CT and T side and also opening success. Now, he's one who breaks off for me from the Simples and Zywoos and honestly, in fact, Device. Because for me, Dupree is number two. And, you know, Nico on his team was the best entry fragger many periods of time. Dupree was sort of modestly close to Device, even if he was ahead of him in like 2018 by a slight bit. Overall, Device was probably a much more efficient entry fragger, even though he had the op. But we can't say that they're not an entry just because they're opting, right? If they're getting the 5v4, it's such an important stat in CSGO that has to count for something. So for me, Nico's the only one who, there's an argument that even with his rifle, it's almost not a handicap. And that throughout history, CT side, no question, he's been the best opener over the years with some great peak years. And on T side with the long-term macro statistics accounted for, Nico beats out Dupree. And uh, I'll give three shout outs before we move on. Rain for having the first or second most attempts on phase. Such a key player on this team, okay? Because we're talking about phase that have won a major and phase that have run a, a grand slam. So, you know, number one team phase. So in a system that's working, Rain is accounting for 25% plus opening attempts sometimes. The problem for Rain is that career average is a little bit low compared to some other players, but he can get up there. And without Rain's attempts and Kerrigan's attempts, they have three players who go slowly, which, you know, normally the balance is, I would say, three players who move faster, two players who move very slowly. On phase, you have bro 
Hiroki, who is down at like 10 to 15% in opening attempts, man. And then take that 10, 15% and let's talk about Stewie. The highest attempts with success with the highest rating over his career and Stewie, Grand Slam and Major. And if you look at his opening attempts, almost 30%. And we're talking about T-side with a 1.0 rating. Stewie is actually low-key. A player who has consistently won trophies throughout his career had an unbelievable amount of attempts on openings. And remember, the reason that we laud this so much is because it's easy to be 10% on openings and have a very nice DPR and a very nice KD ratio and a very nice headshot percentage. The guy who is the entry fragger is the most likely to die without a kill. But to take up to 30%, Elise is the only other person who was doing that much in terms of effort. But okay, these are my entries. Nico, Dupree, Rain, and a special shout out for Stewie and a special special shout out for Elise actually. Okay, let's move on to best in-game leader. Best IGL for me, as you've already seen, is Glaive. Now, I've gone through the arguments, Glaive, Kerrigan. You can watch Glaive versus Kerrigan in the video. Link it right here. And I would just like to say, I don't know what Fallen's doing as of right now, but bro, Fallen, unbelievable. Clearly one of the best leaders and captains ever. Definitely the best leader and captain in Brazil. And longevity-wise, might not be at Kerrigan's level, but he's got two majors, arguably a strong period of time, even if you don't call it an era with Fallen, compared to Kerrigan, who's never had an era and he's still kicking and now he's actually got the chance to go to furia which is the best team in brazil it's a very special time for fallen and for me to think about him in his career glaive for me massive era defended that era four majors two major MVPs that weren't him. Great as an individual and impact in 2018. That of course helps, but he turned Kerrigan's team into the most winning team of all time. Kerrigan lives in a shadow for that reason. But if we look at Kerrigan, won multiple S tier events with stand-ins. You know, it, it gets a little weird when you try to look at his career for that reason. You know, one with Chromin, one with Exist, one with JKS. Most impressively, I think using JKS and Cato as the entry. Now, I want to give a special shout out to Pronax because Pronax is an early 2014, 2015, 2016 caller that we don't talk about anymore. I think ended up owning Godsent, but doesn't play anymore. But Pronax was actually the player who, even before dominant villain era Fnatic, won the very first major in CSGO. That Fnatic won the major because of his calling. You know, if he's famous for something, it's mid-rounding. If you watch the comeback on Train versus NIP in the grand finals of the very first CSGO major, where Devilwalk drops his pants at the end, Pronax is mid-rounding. That's how they crush Nip. Pronax, you could see early on that he was going to be a great caller, and then he ended up bottling Lightning with having Olaf and JW and, and Flusha. And I think the best part about that Fnatic team was that he didn't rein them in so much that they lost their personality, right? They weren't playing Pronax's game. He just leaned into their personalities and play styles so well that they dominated because because they were able to express it in a way that was cohesive. They played with so much individual confidence on top of the fact that you knew Pronax was a guy who had so much utility in his back pocket. Pronax was known for being well-prepared, being smart, and it makes up for a sort of impulsive, crazy teammates that he had to work with. Okay, so that's IGLs. All right, now best op of all time. All right, best op of all time is simple. It's simple. He's got an average top 20 placing of 2.7. I looked at these numbers the other day. Device is something like five point something with eight placements, which is amazing because that's eight years in top 20. Three different trajectories here, okay? So we've got Device who, he's never number one on HLTV, but he's unbelievably consistent, has the most HLTV top 20 placings. And if you take away his worst placing, which is number 20 in 2014, it helps him out a lot in his average, but it's still not close to Simple, who is the only player who's been number one three years in a row, who would have been number one five years in a row if Zai wouldn't exist. And for Zai if Simple didn't exist, he'd be number one four years in a row. But Zai Wu's trajectory is one of a perfect career, as GSP would say. Perfect career, averaging top 1.5 out of four years. Either number one or number two, that's it. What the fuck, okay? But simple, we're talking seven years. We're talking average 2.7. In 2018, maybe the best year of any player in history. He had to beat out 2018 Device, 2018 Astralis. He had to beat out 2018 Nico. He did that. He did that with a much worse team. Simple's the GOAT, the best op. And uh, all these players are so elite though. I believe, personally,
personally, they would all be top five on average without an op. In fact, all three of them in their careers have chose not to op at certain points. These are three players that are just so elite. You need them to have the best gun. These are the best chance to get the most kills. Shout out to Kenny S, major MVP, second best French opper before Zaiwu spawned. One of the most infamous and talked about oppers post years and years of not playing. It doesn't matter. People are still talking about Kenny S. And yes, he only peaked at HLTV number six, but really terrible teams. And let's just watch a couple of Kenny S highlights, huh? The uh, fast pushes from Titan have been called and found oh. out, but there's Kenny S with two oh. and a third as well. Oh. And a fourth. <laughs> Unbelievable play from Kenny, oh the ace. I need someone to hold me right now. That was, a, that was amazing. Bomb does get planted still. But Kenny S stuck in the site, finding more. That's brilliant, and Kenny S again up close. Oh my goodness, Kenny S, the no scope. All right, now let's come in for a good one here. It's best clutch. So best clutch, Zipix is the best clutcher of all time. 2018, we're talking about record set with the amount of clutches. If you watched a team win a tournament, did you ever feel like they couldn't have one without the clutches from one player? Because that's how many clutches Zipix was winning in 2018. I remember playoffs where I said, there were like five different times that Astralis would have lost the event if not for Zipix's clutch. When the map is empty, two mines going out, at it, minimal utility, very fresh information, low HP in a lot of cases, lots of body sprays and maximum nerves. Zipix was the player who got an aim buff. His aim got better. In the 5v5, it felt like Zipix, he just wasn't there to save the day. No one was that scared of him. But when he got into a 1v1, he got into a 1v2, he got into a 1v3, he would get this buff where it was minimum two kills in the 1v3. And it felt like he had an evasion aura. No one could do damage to him. Even if he had a sloppy peak like you could still see it was zipix that guy who's clearly not the most mechanically skilled guy on his team but suddenly like boom instant headshot boom clutch and perfectly timed peak timing god clutching is also something that's fallen way out of fashion you don't see as much clutching these days you know it really shines a light on how amazing it was to have zipix before that i would say flush as the second best and my second favorite okay maybe not second best this one's very contentious for me but again these these shout outs are a little bit like they're all probably top five if i'm right so i'll just get them out flusha uh, get right and snacks amazing clutches that we can all think of uh, flush is another Another player who just looks like an average Joe. And then all of a sudden it's a 1v4 and like bum, 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 bum. and you're like, what the hell? How the where did he get that from? Where'd that come from? Some of the best lurks in the game. And Get Right was a guy that in 2013, 2014, was one of the few elite players to go back to back number ones. He didn't lose 1v1s. He could play almost the same lurk multiple times in a row and it would still work. He would find a new timing for it back to back to back. So like you know Get Right's going to be on the flank. Get right can do this whenever he wants. He has full control, full autonomy. No lurkers get this kind of space anymore because it doesn't work anymore because like now people are so smart. When they know that's your role, you'll last alive, they press tab, boom, they're gonna watch the flank, you're dead. But get right is the reason that you can't do that anymore. He was the most watched player 2013, 2014. He was the most studied, he was the most loved, he was the most revered, and yet still he got away with everything you wanted to over and over and over again. Truly special, truly special to dominate. I, I think that, you know, it's important to look back in history and talk about how dominant was your favorite player compared to their field more than just how hard was the game or how far along was the game shout out to snacks big apple hungry snacks lurk upper b mirage snacks iconic lurk iconic clutches iconic clutches super smart player iconic clutches tricky sneaky guy funny guy snacks shout out snacks all right and, and finally let's come in for best rifler okay of all the players that i have written down there's only one player on this list there's only one single player that didn't win a major and it's nico and for me he's the best rifler in csgo history He's the best entry and he's the best rifler overall. Uh, sorry, like, fuck your favorite riflers. There is no other player like Nico in the same statistical ways as Nico that can dominate entire maps by himself with a rifle that can keep up across so many years and so many teams at such a high level. Now we mo move on to <laughs> Olaf and Cold Zera and gotta say, obviously, amazing players too. Uh, Olaf had multiple spots named after him. That's his claim to fame for me. I copied so 
so many things from the way Olaf played T sides. Um, as an entry player, very crafty, great guy, everything like that. Called Zara, insane peak and insanely long peak, and insane for how early in his career that he became the best Brazilian player. And he did it also with a rifle. He's probably the closest competition directly to Nico in some of these ways. But you know, of course, really fell off a lot and everything. And and a shout out to Twist for having the hardware of, a, of the you know the most hardware taking over the spot of most winning North American player from Stewie with the second Grand Slam, the major to match. And yeah, Twist, such, such a selfless player. Yeah, Twist has accomplished a hell of a lot on top of being insanely consistent and actually just such, so classy in the sense that he gets better and better. And in some ways, I think Entry Fargus could learn a lot from Twist. He is very good at playing his role that is like sometimes third in or whatever, but also speeding up when he needs to. He will get down and dirty if he needs to. And I think that's something that needs to be said about Twist. He might not be aggressive, but he's explosive. And that's what's made him win so much. So, all right, man. These are a bunch of players who are all amazing. And it's so sad that CSGO is ending, man. So many great players, so much history, so many great storylines wrapped up. And, you know, even with like Nikos, for example, which is so sad that he didn't win a major, at least it's even something to talk about. It feels like everything worked out in that sense. You know, there's one guy who didn't get it. Maybe Guardian, actually. Shout out to Guardian. That should have. But um, wow, so many things got tied up in this last year. So many great years of CS. So much fun to watch this. And, you know, yeah, I don't know. Just It's, it's just awesome. So... All right, that's it. No more top fives, no more best ofs. I think we're moving on to CS2, I think. We'll see.